Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at the first case that I've ever seen from Neutron Labs. This is the W07 ARGB, and it is definitely a winner. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at Neutron Labs W07 ARGB. This is a ATX style case, and at the moment in the UK, it retails for around about £47, which I think is absolutely stunning value for money. You get a ton of features, you get obviously four addressable RGB fans, you get a fan hub, you also get a vertical GPU mount, and various other features. This case has pretty much got everything but there is one or two things which let it down slightly. But we'll be going through those in the review, so strap yourselves in and uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so let's take a look at the case, do a teardown, see what it's all about, see what fits, see what doesn't, and then we'll uh, see what our final thoughts are. Now, initially, when I first got this case, I thought to myself, for less than £50 for an ATX format case with a fan controller, four addressable RGB fans, and also tons of flexibility for cooling, I thought this has got to be an absolute winner. It's the best case on the market, surely. And also it does borrow a lot of design ideas or basically just the chassis itself from some of our already favorite cases, such as the GameMax F15M and also the Lian Li 215, both of which I think are absolutely brilliant cases, but often they retail for considerably more than this, generally in and around the 60 to 70 pounds mark, which yeah, is a little bit more of a stretch for those of us on a slightly tighter budget. But essentially, as it stands, this chassis itself is pretty much the stock chassis as used by both of those particular brands. And for that reason, obviously, it gives you a ton of flexibility. So starting off with the front here, we've got the option for three 120mm fans, two 140mm fans. You can, if you want to, put in a 360mm rad, a 280 rad, etc., etc. You get the general idea. So plenty of cooling options on this front panel. Now the front panel, as you can see, is obviously a little bit different from those other two cases we've mentioned. So we've got a very different design here. So we've got these kind of uh, slats up here, which look very kind of Star Wars-y. If you look at some of the original Star Wars films, you can see some of the design elements there. Behind this panel as well, there is also a removable magnetic dust filter, which again is going to help to prevent all those dust bunnies accumulating inside your PC case. Removing the front panel is really very simple. All we need to do is grab the pull handle on the front and give it a little bit of a tug and the front comes off relatively easily. Taking it off, you can actually remove the magnetic filter from the inside and give that a clean if you want to. Now, of course, if you want extreme airflow and you're not too concerned about dust, then you can just put this straight back on as it was. Um, it gives you a slightly different look and also obviously makes the fans and the RGB a little bit more pronounced. So yeah, for those of you that aren't dust conscious, this is definitely an option. It is gonna reduce temperatures by a couple of degrees and obviously let a little bit more light through. This front panel itself, actually, uh, I thought initially it would be plastic, but actually it's all metal construction, which is really, really good. There are a couple of plastic bits, which is the uh, the catches, which actually go into the frame itself. But other than that, it, essentially the outer frame is all metal. So now with the front removed, we can take a closer look at the fans. Now the fans included are PWM style fans. They've got a three volt connector. So essentially they kind of work on DC voltage, but most motherboards these days will actually read the RPMs off them. And I've actually found that these actually go down to around about 500 RPM at the bottom end and about 1200 RPM on the top end. So not particularly loud, but certainly will get the job done. And they look very nice. You've got opaque blades there, which let the RGB shine through, as you've probably already seen from some of the B-roll or from the intro to the video. All the fans have got, like I said, they have a three pin connector for connecting to fan headers. That can be used with a three or four pin header. And also there is a very standard five volt addressable RGB connection, which is basically the four pin with one missing, which we're all used to seeing. So. Flexibility wise and compatibility wise, no issues there whatsoever. And also they have included a really handy little fan hub, which you can connect all the fans and also the addressable RGB to. Sadly, the actual fan hub itself has only got four ports on it for both RGB and for fans. So essentially out of the box, it is fully populated. So that limits expansion. But of course you can always buy splitters and additional fan hubs, that kind of thing, if you want to add more devices. Also, most motherboards these days do generally tend to come with a option of one or two addressable RGB headers or RGB headers. So you can certainly expand the system in that way if you wanted to. So let's move around to the side of the case. So as you can see, we've got a tempered glass side panel, which actually has a nice black frame around the outside edge. So that's gonna be great for hiding fingerprints and that kind of thing. And it's held on really easily with two thumb screws, which are captive. 
as we saw on the previous Game Max case and also the Lian Li. Sadly, this particular side doesn't actually have a grab handle to uh, pull the glass off, which is a little bit of a minor inconvenience, but certainly not a deal breaker. The glass itself has a very, very slight smoke tint to it, but uh, not very dark at all and is not really going to cause any issues with lighting. Taking a look inside of the case, you can see the layout is identical, if not very, very similar to the Lianli 215 and also the Game Max F15 and probably countless others which are made by the same ODM. As you can see at the bottom, we've got this uh, ventilated section for your power supply basement, all that kind of stuff. There is a cutout to show off your power supply. Obviously, in this particular instance, we're not really showing off a power supply. It's just a basic one just to power up the lights. But it's all finished in a really nice kind of colour. It is a difficult one to explain. It's not jet black. It's a kind of almost like a charcoaly grey. So very nice colour, actually. Finished very well. And overall, the finish is done pretty much exactly the same all over. So there's no kind of odd areas where it's not particularly finished well, so I think they've done a particularly good job, again, considering how cheap this case is. On this top, on the vented section, so there is an option if you want to, you can actually install two 120mm fans, and all the mounting hardware is included in the accessories bag, so you can put two fans on there, pulling air into your GPU area. Also as well, you can mount two SSDs, or hard disk drives of the 25 inch size, on this little bracket, so this on a thumb screw, as we're used to seeing, so you can mount two drives on there and put that back in. Or obviously, if you want to, you can just leave that out of the system to allow slightly more airflow in this area. Personally, I would have liked to have seen the fact of being able to add two of these in this bottom basement section. There is actually another one of these included in the kit, so you can mount them on the back as well. So it would have been nice to have seen the option to mount them there as well. Sadly, there isn't a screw or mounting pillar to actually do that. I think that would have been nice for some people that prefer this to be like a flat section. You could put two next to each other and it would look certainly a lot flatter. At the back of the case, we've got plenty of pass-through options there. There's four big cutouts for passing things through, such as I.O. connections, your USB 3 connections, fan connections, all that kind of stuff. So those are all in really good places. And there's plenty of them, so you shouldn't have any cables kind of stretching across distances, which may look untidy. Moving back towards this front section where we've got the fans. So at the moment, as it comes from the factory, the fans are mounted on the front of the case. You can, of course, if you want to, if you want to move them back a little bit more, uh, for airflow reasons or for whatever case, then you can put them behind. Also as well, there's a really big channel cut out there, so if you want to, you can put a 360mm rad up front. Also, obviously, a 280, 240, etc, etc. For me personally, um, I think I'd probably leave it in the stock configuration, although, again, down to the fan's placement being relatively close to that mesh front, possibly I'd be tempted to move them behind just to give uh, a little bit more airflow and also to reduce some of that turbulence noise that you get when a fan filter or a housing is too close to the front of the fan blades. Looking on the sides, there's plenty of cutouts there for passing through your main ATX power and maybe USB connections, that kind of thing. Same goes for the top. So in the top section, you've got really large cutouts there. Again, for things like your fan connectors or if you're planning on putting a radiator in this top section, which is one thing I'm really pleased to say, again, as per the Lian Lead 215 and also the Game Max F15, there is an option to put a 240 radiator in that top section. Potentially, some of you may get away with putting a 280 in there. That is going to be dependent on the VRMs and your memory clearance. That is going to come into effect. But there is actually a really decent distance between the top of the case and where your motherboard would sit. So generally, most types of AIO are going to fit in there with very, very few problems. Again, that is going to be down to limitations of VRM heat sinks and also RGB RAM if it's particularly high. Also, pretty much standard these days, but we'll note it anyway, is this massive cutout for the back of the CPU area. So if you're mounting a AIO or some sort of custom cooling device, then you've got nice, easy access to the back plate there. And the fact that it is actually quite wide, some boards, they have the CPU mounted slightly closer to one way or the other. So this is going to cover pretty much all your bases. When it comes to CPU height clearance, then we're looking at a clearance of 165mm, which isn't huge, but certainly does cover the majority of 120mm tower coolers. Pretty much all of your other kind of stock 120mm coolers, like your Cooler Master 212, your Vitro V5, uh, Dark Flash, etc., all those are going to fit in there with no problems at all. Looking at the rear of the case, so we've got all of our I.O. blanking plates, and I'm pleased to say all of those are removable and replaceable, so none of those horrible bendy out ones, which is really nice to see. Also as well, you can see the fourth of the addressable RGB fans, which is included. Again, standard connections all through, three pin for the fan header and the five volt addressable RGB for the RGB, which is absolutely brilliant. And also there's a little bit of a gap at the top there, which gives you some indication of the kind of height difference 
that you do get with certain cases. This actually is going to be replacing my Fantex P400A, which sadly is very limited in the, uh, the upper apartment for installing AIOs, that kind of thing. So yeah, this will actually be ending up in my own personal build. One other thing of note, obviously, like I said, I did mention earlier, there is a vertical GPU mount, which is included. So we've basically got this uh, black frame, which is all metal. And essentially all we do is remove the IO plates from the back install this instead, and then you can mount your GPU vertically. Sadly, at the moment, I don't have one of those flexible PCI Express extension slots, otherwise I would have shown you in action, but certainly that is something which we may look at doing. And because of the way that the actual case is kind of recessed in that particular way, the actual GPU would be kind of central, so you would actually get particularly good airflow, which sometimes is the case with vertical mounting, where it ends up being too close to the glass. But I think in this particular situation, it's actually gonna be beneficial rather than being detriment to the heat. So let's move around to the uh, the boring old back part. So again, pretty much exactly the same if you've seen the F15 or the uh, the 215, exactly the same deal. So we've got option for the 120mm fan. You can move it up and down slightly, but there's no option for a 140, sadly. Again, you've got the removable brackets there and you've got your power supply basement in the bottom. Power supply wise, you can pretty much put anything you want in there. There's an absolute ton of room in there for power supplies. So if you've got a relatively budget offering, no problem. If you've got a huge kind of 1,200 watt power supply, yeah, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Moving around to the back. So uh, yeah, pretty boring, basic uh, back. Nothing to write home about there, but we do have captive screws, which is always nice. And also a grab handle to remove the side panel. And the panel has actually a little bit of flex there, but certainly does seem to be pretty sturdy. So looking at the back now, so this is where things get slightly more interesting and hopefully this will kind of work out if this is gonna be the right case for you. So let's take a look first of all at the top, obviously we've got those big pass-throughs. So again, if you're putting an AIO cooler in here or some fans in the top there, again, fan-wise, you can put 140 fans in there, 280 rads, etc., etc. Yeah, All the full specs will be on the links in the video description. This case actually, uh, I should have mentioned at the beginning, is currently only available from eBuyer in the UK at the moment. So Neutron Labs is kind of like their own brand. So if you wanna check out more, there is basically a ton of these cases available, all with a very, very similar layout actually for the structure itself, just with different options. Like with the Game Max F15, you've got an option with the two 200 mil fans up front, which is awesome. And there's other variations. There is actually one of this, which comes with no fans at all, and it's about 35 pounds. So if maybe the RGB stuff isn't really your cup of tea, but you actually like the design structure, then yeah, for around like 35 pounds, definitely worth a look. Anyway, let's take a look at what we do actually get in this particular one. So let's take a look at the, uh, the IO connections first of all. So the IO itself, again, because of the way it's laid out, it's ideal because it gives you more room up top and the IO itself is actually absolutely fine. There's a single USB 3.0 port, there's two USB 2.0 ports, there's a separate headphone and mic jack, and also you've got an LED button and your power button. No reset button on this one, although you can if you want to, you can repurpose the LED button it is basically a push switch, so if you want to use it as a reset switch, you certainly can do, or you even hook it up to a CMOS reset if you really feel the need. But certainly, I think for most people, they'll probably just hook it up to the actual controller in the back here, and you can use the LED button to switch through your lighting cycles. Alternately, if you don't want to, then you can actually hook up the hub to an addressable RGB header on your motherboard, again, which is the standard five volt, three pin addressable RGB, and also has a spur coming off it for the kind of older gigabyte single pin connections. Anyway, back to the uh, the connectivity is up on the front. These cables are quite nicely blacked out for the IO. So again, that's your kind of hard drive LED, etc. You've also got a USB 3.0, and also you've got a USB 2.0 and your HD audio connectors. Would have been nice to have seen those to be blacked out towards the ends, but again. These days, is that the end of the world? And if you're having a GPU vertically mounted, you won't see any of that anyway. So yeah, absolutely fine. So looking at the back, we've got uh, plenty of tie down points. So there's kind of like two there, one there, two there, three there, three there, a few down the side here, a couple down the bottom. So tie down points are gonna be absolutely fine. Depth wise, you've got the best part of about an inch of depth there. Again, as you did with the Game Axe F15 and the Lian Lee 215. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're getting sick of me mentioning those two cases. So also we've got pass-throughs again, like we said there, and also there's pass-throughs for cabling for the front fan. So if you want to go for a slightly different setup, you can do. I have taken a little bit of time to do some cable management for the, uh, the front fans there. So I've got that all bunched up into one. So that is going into the hub there. So we've got the actual fans going into that side and the RGB into that side. 
all that actually needs is a single SATA connector, which we've got plugged in there, so that's really nice and handy. There's no pass-through for it, it's literally just a plastic block there, so you can plug that in. And actually I find that is quite handy for training some of these cables, so absolutely excellent. Moving down, we've got the pretty open basement section. There is an option in there for a three and a half inch mechanical drive if you wanted to. And also on the top of that, you can mount another three and a half inch drive or another two and a half inch drive. So plenty of drive mounting options. You can move this forward and back as well. There's two options on the bottom for moving it into different placements, or you can just take it out and give yourself more room underneath or more airflow should you see the need. Again, power supply wise, there's an absolute ton of room there. So even if you haven't got a nice modular power pack, then you're gonna be absolutely fine for stuffing cables in there. You also got the drive mounting area here. So that just unscrews and you can pop that off again. You can put another two, two and a half inch drives in there, either SSDs or hard drives. So yeah, that's all pretty good. Actually, I'll leave that out for now. So you can see that. So plenty of area there. If you wanted to put maybe a different hub in or another fan hub, whatever, you certainly can do. And potentially you might want to, because this is possibly one of the biggest downfalls of this particular case. Finally, we are gonna to get to the elephant in the room, and that is the fan controller. And you're probably saying, Mike, is the fan controller any good? That is not an easy question to answer, my friends. The fan controller does what it's meant to do. It does kind of control fans, but not in the way you think it would. So the fan controller doesn't have, as you've probably noticed already, doesn't have a output for the actual fans to go onto a motherboard. So there is no control of the actual fan speed whatsoever. So the fans when plugged in will be running at pretty much full blast, which is around about 1100 to 1200 RPM, which for some people might be a little bit on the loud side. For me personally, I don't think I could put up with that. It is a little bit on the loud side. The fans themselves are pretty quiet units and not intrusive at all. But for me personally, especially in this kind of studio environment where we try to limit as much noise as we possibly can, then they may be a little bit on the loud side. So it's very likely that if I do use this myself in my own build, what I'll probably do is just connect up the fans to the motherboard as you would normally, and use this just for a hub for the actual addressable RGB lighting, which I think works out absolutely fine. Obviously again, depending how fussy you are about noise, then you may be absolutely fine with the fans running at full speed. I did find that one of the fans, which is currently the rear one, there is a very, very slight tick to it when it's actually rotating. The front ones are absolutely fine, and I think it's just a manufacturing thing. I will be taking this up with eBuyer to see if uh, they can either swap it out, whatever. It's not that bad, but for me, again, being in a studio environment, I do like to keep things as quiet as I can, so that kind of added tick is just something which is quite annoying. But again, for £46 for a case, it's unlikely this is going to happen to you because this is probably just a one-off in manufacturing. I could quite easily just replace that fan anyway or just leave it out. Three fans at the front is actually probably enough for most systems. Anyway, that's that said. So yes, RGB-wise, you can control from either the reset button, which has been repurposed as an LED button. So that just plugs into that two-pin connector there. Or again, you can just pass it through to your motherboard. Fan control, the actual RPMs for me is... Um, yeah, a little bit problematic personally, but again, let me know in the comments what you think about that. Looking at the bottom of the case, so again, pretty much exactly the same deal. The Lian Li does this section a little bit better. I think on that one, there was actually a removable like sled which you could take the filter out. This one is just one of those kind of flexible units which comes out in its entirety, which yeah, isn't ideal, but it does get the job done. And actually then you can see where the removable drive cage holes are, all that kind of usual stuff. And the bottom section is pretty much all ventilated. So if you did decide you wanted to put those 120 mil fans in the basement section, and you're thinking, well, where is it gonna draw air from? Well, certainly it can draw air in through there. And conversely, if you're having this as a positive airflow setup, then this will actually push dirt and dust out or kind of reject it. So yeah, whether or not you actually need the filter, that is gonna be down to the individual. One thing I did notice as well, looking in the back when you actually have the power supply there, there is a relatively close tolerance between this particular power supply and the bottom edge there. So you may find when you're doing your build, you wanna put those IO cables through, especially your HD audio, which is most likely to be in this corner. So I'd probably pass that through before you actually slot the power supply in. Again, exactly the same deal with the Lian Li and the Game Max F15. So yeah, no real surprises there. So let's take a quick look at the uh, the top section. So we've got our IO, so we've got a power button in where you'd expect it to be, nice and up front there, which is excellent. LED button, as we said, and also you've got the, your hard drive activity and power LED buttons there, or LEDs. USB 2.0, headset and mic, and also another USB 2.0, and your USB 3 at the back there, which, yeah, absolutely fine. On the top, we've got this removable magnetic filter. 
giving you access to all of the uh, kind of fan layouts. Again, if you're putting a AIO in here or just fans, options for 120s or 140s in there, two 140s, three 120s probably be a push, but two is absolutely fine. Again, combinations of radiators, AIOs will be dependent mostly on your RAM and also the VRMs on your motherboard, as is the case usually. So overall, I think this is actually a fantastic package. Yes, the fan controller, although that's somewhat of an oxymoron because it doesn't really control the fans, it just powers them. But anyway, we'll let that slide for now. For £46, £47, uh, plus a little bit of postage from eBuyer, I think this is a definite winner. You can, if you want to, go for a kind of like a slower postage method, which is about £3, I think it is. So for around about £50, there isn't a great deal better on the market, in my opinion. And I'm actually very much considering getting the other versions of this case, which is the uh, W03, and I think there's a Galaxy as well, which are all, again, very similar chassis, but just slightly different fan layouts, that kind of thing. And some of the components inside are slightly different, like the fan controllers, possibly. So we'll possibly be looking at those at a later date. But yeah, overall, I think, if I was to give this a rating out of 10, it's definitely got to be an eight or a nine out of 10. There is very, very few things which go against this. I would say I'd drop one point off for the uh, the filter on the bottom, which is possibly a little bit harsh. It, it does what it's meant to do. It's just awkward to uh, remove and to replace, but most people probably just vacuum it every now and then and leave it in place anyway. The other point I would drop off would be for the, uh, the lack of control in the fan controller. But otherwise, I think this is, pretty much the ideal case. And certainly I'd be interested to see what your comments are in the uh, section below. Do let me know. Are you a fan of the Lian Li 215? Are you a fan of the Game Access 15? And if so, would you consider using this as a cheaper viable alternative? Um, I think it answers the question for me. I certainly will be because well, I bought it. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. As I said, uh, for now, this has been the Neutron Labs w 7 ARGB. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.